Hello! In this video, we will keep improving our platform shooter and we will be guided by this comment. More enemies. Ok, so let's focus on enemies for now. First, we can improve this enemy we already have. I guess that the enemy being unable to turn to the right make it really easy to kill, right? So let's change that. Let's open the enemy scene. Now we can add another raycast. And we can make this raycast point to the right. Now we open the script. Let's copy the code we used to the first raycast and make some adjusts to make it work to the second one too. First we adjust the name. We need to flip the enemy sprite so that he will turn to the player. Let's change this else to elif because we need to test to the left, then to the right, and we just need one else when no raycast is detecting the player. Let's see if the enemies are turning correctly now. Ok, they are identifying the player and turning in the right direction, but are still not shooting in the correct direction. Let's fix that. To do that, we can just check before we call the shoot function if the sprite is being flipped. So, if flip h is true, we call shoot true, and if it's false, we call shoot false. We just need to make a small adjust at the position 2D as we have done before to the player, so that the bullet will respawn in the correct position after the enemy turns to the other side. So let's check the positioning. We can add this value when the enemy is turning to the left, and we set the value to 20 when he is turning to the right. Let's see the result. Ok, a lot better now. Now we have a real enemy. Now we will see how we can extend this enemy to easily create as many variations as we want. But before we will set some variables to our enemy that can be changed for new kind of enemies. So let's say we want an enemy that shoot faster, has a longer range and so on. We can create as many variables as we want. Then we go to our scene, click with the right button at the enemy and go to new inherited scene. With that we create a new enemy that starts exactly the same as our current enemy. We can see that this enemy uses the same script as the other enemy. But we want to change some aspects of this enemy. So we can detach this existing script from our enemy true and then we attach a new script. Now here at inherits we need to select the script of the original enemy. And we can now create a script with the name of enemy true, or you can give the name you want, and save it at the script folder. And so, our new script should start with extends and the path to the original enemy script. That means that everything that the original enemy has, this enemy has true. And we can define new functions here if we want this enemy to make extra stuff. But for now, let's just make him shoot faster and in a longer range. To do that, we can use the init function to set the variables to new values. And now let's put the enemy at the scene to check the result. And we can see that the enemy is shooting a lot faster so it is working. But he's shooting to the right, so probably I have forgot to change the collision layer of the ground, so let's fix that.
And there we can see that the layer was set to player, and for sure the ground's not a player, so let's change that. Ok, it's working fine now, but if we have a lot of them we will not know which one is the hard one because they look exactly the same. That's really easy to change and we should do that. So let's just open the new enemy and change the sprite. Now we know that the yellow one is a lot harder than the red one. We can make him even harder, let's make him take less damage. Really easy to change, right? So with this method you can create a lot of simple variations of an enemy, or objects, or what you want. But we can create an enemy that's totally different if we want. And maybe in this case it makes no sense to extend the existing one. So let's create an enemy that flies at the player's direction. So we can create a new scene. It will be a no 2D. We can rename it. Now we can add an animated sprite. I will use the sprite I made for the Flappy Bird clone tutorial. So let's add the sprite and start animation. Now we can add an area 2D with collision shape to be the collision area of this enemy. Let's increase the enemy's size. Now we can add an extra area to be something similar to a vision area. So that if the player enters this area, the enemy will attack flying at the player's direction. So we can increase the collision shape to adjust to a good size to make the detection. And let's add our exclamation mark so that we know that the detection is working. We can add an animation player to make the enemy move up and down when he's not attacking the player. So, let's add the start position. We can increase the time of the animation to 2 seconds. At 1 second, we set a new position. And at 2 seconds, we move it back to the original position. Let's just put the exclamation mark inside the sprite, so it will move too. And I will make a little adjust to the position. We can already put the enemy in the scene. Now that we have our scene, let's add a script. So we can start adding the code for the signals. So first, if a body enters the collision area, we check if this body is the player. And if it is, the player is heated and the enemy is destroyed. Ok, heated with one T, let's keep it so for now. Now you can check if an area enters the collision area.
We need to make this check because our bullet is an area and not a body like the player. So we will check if the parent of the area is named bullet. And if so, the bullet and the enemy will be destroyed. Let's adjust the collision layers. Ok, now let's add the body enter signal to the vision area. Then we check if the body is the player. If it is the player, let's save the player reference in a variable, because we will need to access the player later. We can save directly the body because the main node of the player is the body. And we can create a variable to say that the enemy should attack. We can make the exclamation mark visible. Now let's create the ready function and make the exclamation mark invisible when the scene starts. Now, inside the physics process, we will make our enemy be able to attack. So we test if attack is true, if not, nothing will happen, but if it is, we stop the animation and we need to upgrade the enemy's position. We will do that using the LARP function, that means linear interpolation, and this function interpolates between two points by a given amount. So we want it to interpolate from the enemy's position to the player's position by the amount or speed of 2 times the delta. So the enemy is chasing us like expected and damages when he collides. Let's remove this crazy psycho enemy to make it easier to test the flying one. And let's move him a bit. Ok, we can make a small adjust to make the enemy turn to the player when he's chasing him. Here we just need to test if the position of the player in the x-axis is bigger than the position of the enemy. If so, we set the flip H to true, and if not, we set it to false. Let's check it again. That's it for this video, I hope you enjoyed, if so please consider subscribe, comment, give a thumbs up, and thank you for watching, bye!